everyone. It's Cheetah here, and I'm going to be doing another uh, ranked video. The season has just reset. Um, actually, last season was the first season I didn't get to Legend, but it wasn't it wasn't the case where I sort of tried really hard and then failed. It was just I didn't have much time to play that season. I sort of did a quick burst of games at the end. Um, I managed to get from rank 5 to rank 2. But um, there's no specific real, uh, goal into getting Legend uh, this season or the previous. Um, Because the Hearthstone Championships are already going on, so you don't really earn any points or anything. But I just play for fun. So yeah, once again I'm going with the Miracle Rogue uh, list. And as you can see I'm against a Warrior. And Miracle is kind of weak against Warriors in general, but I guess the aggro list is kind of the best one to be against. In some regards anyway, because... The control ones can just sit back and armor up all game. Here we go. Whereas this one, you can actually um, use your spells more effectively to clear the board and build a board presence yourself and then try and race him down. Um, obviously he's removed his uh, warrior hero power, so this will be a race type of game. Seems like he has a good hand, but... I mean, I do have an Earth Ring to heal up a little bit. And I can take control of the board this time. I can save uh, SI7. I can use Prep Sap SI7 or something like that. Against Aggro, obviously, you're going to be much less frugal with your spells, you're just going to cast them um, as fast as possible basically. Like here for example, I actually think the best move is to Shadow Strike his face. The fact that he's a hunter hero power is, and he has a deck full of like good burst damage stuff and he's just not cast anything from his hand and plays is going to be a race and he's going to go quite fast so I think I better Start matching his damage. Buffed his weapon? Okay, I don't really, don't really mind too much about that. If I play Azure Day Azure Drake and double face or trade into this and face. It's the most mana efficient, but he can quite easily clear the board if he wanted to. Whereas if I played Thanos, Sap, trade, face, he could clear with Ravaging Ghoul. But it's only Ravaging Gore that would clear, so. I'm just gonna go for it. Ravaging Gore would be a super strong turn. I don't really mind if he buffs his weapon again, because he obviously has a handful of stuff, so he's not gonna be able to cast everything by the time the game ends anyway. So he buffs it again, I don't mind. Buffs it again, I also don't mind. And he's just going face. And again face.
If I um, eviscerate this, here's lethal with uh, mortal strike, assuming I hit face with both. So I think I have to hit face with one only. I'm pretty confident he has a mortal strike in his hand. Um, it would do six damage if he was at twelve or less. So if we top deck prep, then we win. So we have a 1 in 19. <laughs> Not so great. Ah, no such luck. Never mind. I wonder if he did have more strike. Could be that I was thinking too much into it and should have hit the 3 1 phase and then I would have had lethal that time. But I did have a solid read that he had like some kind of burst in hand and having just used a heroic strike. It seemed likely that. Hitting the 3 1 into face would have resulted in an immediate loss, whereas at least I had then a chance of um, top taking a lethal. But you never know, maybe I was uh, incorrect in my read. And maybe it would have been better to just uh, mindlessly hit face. There was still an unknown card in his hand, so who knows. Just going to adjust the microphone a second. Because the way I position it to talk when I'm doing these videos, it kind of gets in the way a little bit. Hmm. Feels like it's kind of correct to sap this because I don't have a decent way of dealing with it for a long time. So let's just slow down the damage a little bit. And also it uses the mana. I mean, the weapon's not doing anything particularly here. I mean, it's removing a 0-2 taunt over two turns, but mm, I'm sure I'm comfortable with that. Could be worth weaponing one of these down with the poison. Also, it could be worth just coining it. I feel like it's better to coin this out ahead of time. I'd rather be proactive in developing minions rather than reactive. At least this forces him to uh, spend a fireball or something. Yeah, he uses his entire turn either way. And I get a coin. Could destroy the mana one, but actually it's not as threatening as it could be, so I think I'm just going to go ahead and play this. Although... No, I'll play this for the same reasons as uh, before I want to be proactive and use all of my mana. It's 
very likely I'm going to have a, pro a reactive turn next turn in preparation for um, Gadget Coin Conceal on turn 6. Although... I guess I should just use the coin this turn because the mana worm and the flame maker are too con too dangerous at this point to leave up. And the mana worm has buffed enough that I'm kind of scared of it. But using the coin, um, I mean, I had to use the coin to clear, and using the coin weakens my next turn considerably, but. I could have two reactive turns where I just do like weapon poison plus maybe our top deck a three drop and then turn seven gadget conceal. I think if I didn't fight for the board that turn I would have fallen too far behind. These little spells, um, I'm going to have plenty of spells to use with Gadget anyway. Turn 7 is going to be immediate Gadget Conceal, and if I top deck a preparation, I'll still have the Eviscerate to go with it. So it's fine to use these 1 mana spells at this point. So I'm actually going to just do this ahead of time, just to... I mean, in case it's useful the next turn. I mean, a 3-3 three, three isn't very threatening, whereas this is, so it might force him to... Uh... Oh, he's got f that torch thing. Oh, another first one. Oh, we have to do this this time. We did not find a prep, unfortunately, because that would have been rather good. But at least this guy's likely to survive. I mean, he could could flame strike as soon as they could. I thought that was the most unlikely option. The other thing would be like arcane missiles giving him a chance. Um, to snipe it. I could return this just to make this an eight eight instead of a six six. But I want it on the board, um, even though this can be fireball now because it's not an 8-8. Eight, eight. I want this on the board just to uh, draw a card. Oh, he was, okay, good, he would have probably left it anyway. And plus this Blood Thistle Toxin gives me a decent chance to uh, win because it threatens more bursts with my Leroy. Next up. No. Sup. Not really what we wanted. Guess we just have to wait another turn. It's looking less and less likely like we're gonna win here because he's sitting on two fireballs. And he can just play minions every turn until he finds them. Thank you. Obviously we have to sap that. Even though he gets another minion, we just die if we don't.
<laughs> Rank 17. Jeez. Well, I'm aware I made just made a video saying this was the best deck. I think I just had a couple bad games, honestly, though. But I could consider changing it up. Plus these warriors and mages, though. I mean, may I should win versus a mage, honestly, but the warriors, not so certain. I like to play this first. Um, the weapon isn't particularly useful against the warrior, and also the Thanos tends to soak up a hit from the fiery warrior if he has one. So what I like to do is Thanos, then he warrixes it, and then I weapon up on turn three instead of playing a three three if I have one. Then I play the Tomb Pillager, and I wait for the weapon to disappear before I start playing the 3-3 three, three minions from my hand. I backstab this, obviously. Um, I don't see a problem with uh, cold-blooding this thing. It's kind, of, it's kind of annoying. Let's see what he's really going to particularly... I mean, he can just Ravaging Wall on curve, but I'm okay with that. Because Ravaging Ghoul can be really annoying if he has Fiery Warrix equipped, and then you have a 4 health minion like one of these, and then he can Ravaging Ghoul them and uh, deal the extra 1 damage. And then obviously, if he didn't have a Ravaging Ghoul, that 5 1 would have been stupid and he'd have had to weapon it. Um, take another 5 damage, draw me a card, or he could have just like used uh, Blood to Icor. I have an but still, that, he wouldn't have got the 2-2 uh, minion from it. So as you can see, what I was saying was he struggles to deal 1 damage, and because he used that Ravaging Goal on the 5-1, he didn't have a way to deal the 1 damage to this Tomb Villager. And now it's going to trade really nicely into this Blood Hoof. So that's kind of perfect. So we're gonna hit. I'm gonna play this first though. I don't really want to particularly SF7 this Ravaging Ghoul. I'm happy just to ignore it. So I think I'll just go over Drake. I guess I could prep eviscerate the ghoul because it would kind of save my Tempillager. But no, I mean, I have Gadget now, especially, so this kind of... It would have been close beforehand. But now that I have Gadget, it's obviously best to save the prep for him. Okay, he did have a Whirlwind, so this is a fine though. I can weapon this Gadget. Coin, prep of this rate, and by then I might top deck a conceal. So. I guess that was another reason not to 
prep eviscerate the 3-3s three because we had gadget in hand and the death of the uh, Tomb Pelagio is a good thing because you want that coin. Interestingly, no more spells at all. I mean, we could play this to get a spell, but I don't think that's the strongest move. I don't think there is a particularly strong move, actually. Although this is Tempo Warrior rather than Aggro, so we don't have to remove this Cork Run. Hmm. Yeah, I guess I will just play this then. Because I'll, I'll still play a 4 drop and a 3 drop anyway. I'll just go ahead and do that, just in case I can top deck into some weird lethals next turn, like possibly um, Deadly Poison, Cold Blood, Eviscerate, SO7. I mean, there's a few ways we could do it. We have four, six. Twelve. So many options. Mm. We can't really top deck these rules. There's a bit of well we can, but it's such a long shot. So it might be better to just clear the board here. He could threaten Lethal with that like, Grumash in a rage next turn, but I don't think this deck runs in a rage. So it might be safer just to um Let's get rid of this one first. I think I'll just clear the board. Oh, that's actually perfect. It doesn't matter that he can bring this out again. Just do this to draw cards because I know my gadget's going to um, die next turn, so I just want to find the uh, remaining cold blood and uh, eviscerate in my deck for the burst. So, um, I think I have Lethal, right? 6, 9, 12, hmm. 14, no, I'm one off. But he can't Lethal me, especially with, um, Gromish there, so I can just set up for a lethal the next turn. So maybe my best turn is um, something like... It's kind of late here, so I'm probably a little bit slower in my moves, but that's okay. It's kind of okay to be uh, slower if you're making a video. 
Oops, I forgot to do DND scope. I don't know how loud that was for the video, but hopefully not too loud. But yeah, we should do uh, I'm pretty sure we're going to win. Um, yeah. He's playing around uh, Cold Blood, which is pretty smart, but I have Leroy. Negative two stars, I think, for the uh, session. But yeah, hope you enjoyed the video anyway. And I'll see you in the next video where I'm probably going to continue to play this deck. So cheers for watching, and I'll see you next time.